DMI. What is it and how do we use it? Okay, well, we're gonna go over that. Why do we have all this junk on the screen? Oh, goodness. Okay, well, things are starting to get a little bit more difficult. So, as we've learned multiple indicators, we start to combine them to help us. Now, as we can see, this DMI looks an awful lot like our vortex indicator. Well, it, it somewhat is. Also, maybe even with an added ADX indicator. You know, a lot of these uh, bumps and humps look awful familiar. Well, they add those things together for our convenience over time. You can use them separately or apart or together. And so, what the DMI has done is they seem to add things together for us. So, the DMI, or Displaced Moving Averages. The Displaced Moving Averages, DMA, are constructed by taking the moving average and shifting it by a number of intervals, either positive or negative. If the number is negative, the displaced moving average will lag the original moving average. And if the number is positive, the displaced moving average will lead the original moving average. A moving average that has been adjusted forward or back in time in order to forecast trends. Displaced moving averages are useful for trend following purposes, reducing the number of whipsaws compared to an equivalent exponential or simple moving average. Displaced moving average generates signals when price crosses the moving average. Go long when price crosses to above the displaced moving average from below. Go short when price crosses to below the displaced moving average from above. Now, seems pretty simple, straightforward, you know, okay. So let's check it out and see how we can use this. And we'll get rid of our two other indicators because we aren't focusing on those today. We're combining them together. So what do we see here? So we see that we're uh, this big downwards play here. Um, and we can see that, you know, it's, it's falling. It's well under, you know, our moving average. So what we would do is we might even find the bottom. We see this big play happening here, so we know to stay away from it. Um, and we see that it's, uh, you know, pink on the top, which we know is, you know, negative. So we don't want to play with that. But as we see, our crossovers happen. Our crossovers happen, and we spot our reversals, and boom, right there. There's your confirmation. This candle that engulfs the doji and comes above the action. Now, you've already missed part of the move. You should have bought in right here where it says you should have bought in. But we can see that there's some volatility. We're green high, and we can ride it above 50% above the price action for our Bollinger Band movement. And we would sell out when we saw our confirmation here or here breaking below the line. Um, but considering that we were still green high, we might not have sold out. We might have rode it out and rode it out and rode it out. And look at that. Just a couple seconds later, we caught this big giant play upwards where we can see that this big green line shot up and this volatility just started to happen all at one time. Um, and it does happen over a couple day period, but then we see the very same drop over a couple day period, verifying this by the volatility and you know, by the, the, this being the bottom or the height of our bottom, <laughs> the lowest of the low right here, on our DMI. Now, we can see it trending back up. Now, we can see the upwards moving, movement in the ADX line, and we can see that it's green high. So, that's a good thing. 
um, we know that we could make another couple dollars here on this play. Um, but once we saw the reversal here, uh, we would get out and we would not bother getting in again. And I would probably even stay away from this move here too, um, being that it's represented here as a negative play. Uh, but if we go all the way to where we are current, the best thing to do being that, uh, well, well, what would we have done? How would we have played this? So we see our Bollinger Bands getting wider. That's a sign of an upwards move. Um, we see our ADX going, you know, wild here with volatility. Um, it, so that's a wonderful thing. Um, we can see some upwards and downwards plays, but right here we can see we're green up. So that's a good thing. You know, uh, you know we might have even gotten in down there. Um, and we can ride this, ride this, ride this uh, until, you know, and well, we're still green up, but coming to a squeeze. So if we continue our green up movement, but if we cross over or our band becomes bigger than our previous band, our negative band becomes bigger than our previous green band, then we know that we're going in a downward direction. And that can be represented by looking at this here, where you can see that number one, the bottom negative line is crossing over the positive green line and that there's no volatility here happening. Um, it's just going to be a nice slow drop off. Um, but studying the DMI can help you get in and out of winning trades. As you see these squeezes happen, you can buy the lows and sell the highs. We're using TCDA for this example, but sometimes you can always check out another stock and see how it looks. And see, now the DMI is uh, represented much better on this stock on this chart. So you cannot always rely on one set of tools. You must rely on multiple tools and know how to use them. This is how you become a profitable trader. You know, you might buy the reversal here or here or down here, and then you could sell up here green high. So play with your indicators, learn how to use them, research exactly what they do on the charts. If you can't look at the indicator and tell yourself without a doubt what's going to happen, then you should not be putting any money into the market. Well, with that being said, uh, if I helped you learn anything new here today, subscribe, you know, share it, social media, all that jazz, you know, I'm here for you. Have a great one.